Okay, hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So just a part two on the probability video that I uploaded the other day. Um, I got some more comments and messages from people asking if I could cover some more probability questions. So I just picked up a couple more different styles, some ones that I thought maybe a little bit harder, some of the more classical ones um, just to kind of talk through um, and get through. Okay, so let's have a look here. So Jeremy, the player, randomly selects a song for him to listen to. So will this increase the probability of the player selects a classical song? So for probability, because I know the styles of questions that come up, I always do like to read the question first. And this is one of those classic ones. It'll be like, okay, there's this many different. It'll be like more than one variable, and then what's the probability of, as the of the pro as the probability of the variable being selected changed, and there'll be some kind of something that happens. So here it's like one song has been deleted from each genre, so one of each variable is decreased. These kind of questions should be your bread and butter, hopefully. Okay, so selecting a classical song, the original chance is five out of fifteen, which is a third. Now that we delete one from each genre, so one from the classical and then three from the bottom stays as a third. So remember, always ask yourself the question, will this increase the chance that the player selects a classical song? I would say no. And it says decreases or remains the same. The answer is going to be D remains the same. Okay, so this is your, going to be your bread and butter question. You should really, hopefully, as soon as you see it, pattern recognition, bang, you immediately start um, doing the maths and it should be fairly self-explanatory. Okay, so let's go on to the next question then. So the next question talks about um, if 1,000 loan applications are processed, does Jack make the most mistakes? So, so the probability of Jack, Sachin, Jack and Liza processing is 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.1. Out of every 100, Sachin makes 33 mistakes, Jack makes 16, Liza makes 22. Okay, so that means out of the lot, Sachin does 600, Jack does six. Uh, sorry, Sachin does 300, Jack does 600 and Liza does 100 because it's 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 0 0.1. Out of every 100, Sachin makes 33 mistakes. So Sachin is going to make, therefore, um, three times the amount because you've got 300, which is 99. Um, Jack makes 16, so he makes 16 lots of that. So it's hard. that's going to be 96. And Eliza makes 22, so it's just 22. So does Jack make the most mistakes? I would say no. And because it's because Sachin makes the most mistakes. Okay, so uh, once again, not too difficult of a question, you just have to work your way through it. The reason why we get 300, 600, and 100 is because this is the probability of them processing an individual loan application. And so if we have a thousand of them, you just multiply each of the probabilities by a thousand. Okay, so now on to this question. So if you play 36 games, should you expect to be in profit? So you pay one pound to play a game where you roll two dice. So that's going to cost you 36 pound in total. You win two pound if exactly one die shows a five, and you win 10 pound if both dice show fives. So out of all the possibilities, you can see that you win two pound if exactly one dice shows a five. So that's going to be all of these, but let's skip the other five, and then all of these as well, but then skip that double five. So that means there's 10 possibilities out of 36. So if you play this 36 times, so, so the chance on each roll of you getting uh, a singular five is 10 over 36. But of course, you play this 36 times, and each time you, that happens, you win two pound. So you can see these cancels. So you're going to end up with £20 from, okay, well, you should, theoretically, okay? You win £10 if both dice show fives. Both dice show fives in just one instance here, which is 1 over 36 times by 36, because obviously 1 over 36 is per go, and you roll, um, you play it 36 times, times that by 10. So that becomes £10, okay? So add these two together, it becomes... Thirty pounds. So, should you expect to be in profit? Well, I'd say you just spent thirty-six pounds, and you're going to win back thirty. So, no, because on average you will win less than you pay to play, because the chance of getting a five is only one in six. Well, this bit's wrong anyway, because it's one in ten, and so C is going to be the answer. Okay, so a slightly different question, but once again, it's just about understanding how to use the probabilities to be able to tackle it. Okay. So on to the next question. So. The number of red counters originally in the bag must have been at least 14 for Peter to be more likely to be correct than incorrect. So some red counters, okay, and 10 black counters are placed in a bag. The counters are drawn out one at a time without replacement. The first three counters drawn are all red. Peter's asked to predict the colour of the next counter. He predicts red. So the number of counters originally in the bag must have been at least 14 for Peter to be more likely to be correct than incorrect. So if Peter is more likely to be correct than incorrect, that means you must have more red than black. And we know that none of the black are pulled out. So that means currently... Oh, that means currently there is 10 black counters. How many red counters? We don't know. But if there's more likely, it has to be greater. And so therefore we know we need at least 11, for example. And if he's already pulled out three red counters, 
that means originally there must have been at least 14. So this statement, I would agree. Yes. So for that reason, let's have, so we can basically only rule out, sorry, I thought that one said no. So we can only rule out D with this. So let's read the other options. So C, because reds are drawn more often, so the odds favours black being drawn next. That's not relevant. Yes, B says yes, because reds are drawn more often, so the odds favour another red being drawn. Once again, both those are not relevant. A says, because the three reds are redrawn, the chance of drawing another red is greater than one half. Exactly. Okay? It's because if you need it to be more likely, that means they have to have more reds than blacks. And so the only way to for that to happen is if you have um, at least 11. Okay? So I would say A is the correct answer here. Okay, so just a little bit of a shorter video. Um, I've got a slightly longer video coming out on SJT, which will be really important, and an SJT run through as well, um, which should hopefully be useful to some of you guys who are looking to hit those upper kind of band one band, um, uh, up those upper band one marks, and perhaps just jump over the border from band two into band one. Um, but importantly, this is just kind of like a follow up video, um, just going over some more of the probability questions, because I really, really do believe that probability is one of those areas where you should be getting 100% along with recognising assumptions. Okay, so as always, please do, um, please do like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment if it's been helpful and let me know what you'd like to see. Um, one of the things that I'm potentially looking at doing in the future is leaving a Google document, like a Google Doc, um, which you guys can just put questions onto, and I'm more than happy to just go through them, um, you know, in like a video for example so it can be questions of any kind really and um, perhaps things that you're struggling with so please do let me know if that is something that you'd like to see so then that will be more direct engagement and i'll be able to answer some of your questions um, more directly okay but as always thank you very much for watching and um, really does mean a lot um, and i hope you found this video helpful see you in the next video thank you very much